Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today I'm going to unpeel back the shade cloth on my garden, show you guys what it looks like, because it's been a million degrees here in Arizona. Yes, we have already hit the triple digits. We were firm in it yesterday. All right, guys, so welcome to the Sunday Garden Tour. Thank you guys for that are joining me in the chat for our live premiere chat. Thank you guys for that. Um, so we have hit officially 103 yesterday, and I think it's gonna be either like 104, 105 today. Now, this is not considered full Arizona summer right now, just because the uh, nighttime temperatures are still nice and cool right now. It's probably about eight o'clock in the morning and we are probably currently about maybe 80 degrees, 75, 80 degrees. So it's really nice. It will heat up though, but by the middle of the day, probably around about maybe three, that's when we'll be getting like the 105 degrees. So when it's the Arizona summers, it's like a hundred degrees all day long. <laughs> So I'm going to show you guys just what my garden is looking like and where I have shade cloth because although we hit 103 degrees yesterday, I don't have everything covered up and I'll show you guys and you guys can see why. But before we get started on this garden tour, I want to thank the following for joining our seed swap. All right, guys, so this is what the garden is looking like, just kind of a big like aerial view. I'll give you guys just a uh, cover and uncover um, kind of explanation of it. And as you can see, I have the banana tree covered over here. I have the uh, big umbrella that has been up. We have some couple things out there shaded. This shade cloth is going across to kind of help the potatoes because they were still kind of suffering. And then we have this front row covered up but the back row all open. And as you can see, some of the things out there are open too as well. Arches are not covered and way in the back there, onions are not covered. But let's go through and kind of see and talk about it. Okay guys, so let's go in here to the herb bed and I wanna show you just what 30% shade cloth makes a difference and how that helps your plants. If you look at this, my sage is now starting to get new leaves. There are no white flies in here. There's no white flies in here because the plants are not stressed. The um, oregano is getting greener and greener and even the sweet marjoram, which should be gone by now if I had it in direct sun, is starting to green up. A lot of the yellow leaves are just kind of going away and you see all these new little leaves coming up. Same thing with the parsley and the um, thyme back there and the green onions stopped putting off flowers and they just started putting out more leaves. Now you guys will probably start to see a theme of me trying to get rid of the white flies as a theme in my garden because when I get pests, a lot of times they are white flies and it's because the, pl the plants are so stressed out from the heat that they are hitting the eject button on life and they're just telling something to come in and kill them and they bring in a lot of white flies that way. But by covering them up, giving them a little bit of that just protection from the sun, gives it such a world of a difference, guys, to where it can bring your plants back from wanting to be done to growing all on its own. And you don't even have to spray anything on it or do anything to make that happen. All you gotta do is provide it a little bit of shade. Okay, I peeled back the shade cloth on the front here, and as you can see, the squash actually didn't really need shade. It just needs ample water. It is already starting to get some protection from the, um, from the corn, and the corn has been helping it to kind of just protect it from that, the big harsh rays of the sun. These ones are doing better because they get way less sun too as well, like they don't get as much direct sun. But the Three Sisters Garden, guys, is already starting to work. Um, I will be planting beans in here soon. One of the things I found kind of strange is the corn on this side is already starting to put up its tassels. I feel like that's too early, but I don't know. 
I'm not a corn farmer, so we'll kind of see what happens. And then the one in the middle is actually the tallest. Now looking over here at my um, cantaloupe, this one is doing well, guys. This one does not need to be covered up. Don't be afraid about the hot temperatures with this guy. You just want to provide it with enough water. If you provide it with enough water, it'll take the hot temperatures well, and it is already starting to climb up the arch. Same thing with the rosemary. If you guys notice, I have the shade cloth that goes down um, on the tomatoes, but the rosemary is completely uncovered. It gets a little bit of dappled shade. Um, this one does. That one does not, but it is still doing quite well. The shade cloth was mainly for the tomatoes, and as you can see, I'm already starting to get new leaves in here, and the leaves aren't curling anymore. My tomatoes were having some massive leaf curl because they were just getting too hot. Now over here, look, we have that little celery that could. It's continuing to grow, so we'll just see. We're, we're letting it see. We're letting it happen, see what happens. And then we have our squash in the middle that is alternating whether it's deciding to put off male or female flowers. So guys, I get this a lot where people say, my squash plants are only putting out male or female flowers. They're not putting out the same flower at the same time. So therefore, I'm not getting pollination on that. Now, what you can do is you can take the male flower out when it um, produces and you can put that, wrap it up in a paper towel, put it in a little plastic baggie and put it in the refrigerator and then wait for a female flower to produce. Then once that female flower produces, you can hand pollinate it with a Q-tip. Or you can just do what I say I'm gonna do every single year and I never seem to do it on time and that is plant the same squash twice. So plant two of them. Yes, you will get an overabundance when it's time for them to really put on their production, but you will have the flowers opening at the same time typically. It has been an insanely crazy week for work, so I'm covering up the shade cloth at the same time after I finish talking about it, just so I can make sure I don't get beat by the heat and then have uncovered plants while I'm trying to finish my video. Now over here, we did sustain some damage on the potato plants, the ones that are hiding behind there, and then also our lemon balm. As you guys can see, I have thumbnails <laughs> right there that I forgot in the garden. But that is why I took this um, shade cloth and wrapped it all the way to the middle here because the umbrella, although it's quite big, the sun was coming in underneath it and basically hitting like right here. And that was just not good. It was burning up the plants. And then coupled that with me at not watering on time and we got some damage. All right, guys. And now we are entering in pepper and eggplant and herb alley. <laughs> So guys, I moved in the other pots here just so that they can be underneath the shade cloth too as well. I might switch the mint and the um, thyme just because mint can take a little bit more heat than the thyme can. But we have this, this um, chocolate mint is doing amazing, smells amazing and tastes amazing. And then the stevia is doing a lot better now that it's over here, not only underneath the shade cloth, but also underneath the tomato. One of the beauties of growing in containers is that when you need to, you can move the containers around. And that moving them around gives you way more life in your garden. Down below, we have the eggplant doing quite well. It has ripened up its last little eggplant, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab those off of probably later on today or tomorrow and just kind of let that do its thing. As you can see, some of the leaves are starting to yellow, so they're gonna to start to fall off and allow room for all the new leaves to come in. We have some onions down there, and if you guys see that little leaf right there, that is actually a rhubarb that I planted, I wanna say like a year ago, decided I didn't want it there, and I cut it up, <laughs> and it's growing itself back. Hmm. And then we have the jalapeno that has so many jalapenos on it. I really need to come in here and harvest all of those and kind of let that plant grow itself and go a little dormant, hopefully, to where it'll stop putting off jalapenos. And then we have some onions down below it too as well. Now we did, I did take up the shishito peppers. So those are gone. We're going to let those um, worms in there compost those roots as we plant the new shishito peppers. And then we have the Tabasco looking beautiful and full. And then we have the um, Italian sweets looking nice too as well. 
Now also over here we have the basil. As you guys can see how fast this basil grows back. If you guys remember, I cut this basil all the way back and I cut that basil all the way back. And they're already nice little bushes. All right guys, so future editing Tiffany here, <laughs> but I totally forgot to announce our winner. Now, as you guys know, it will, if you haven't known, then watch last week's video, last Sunday's video, because Survival Garden Seeds sponsored our fall garden, which we are excited and completely grateful for. Thank you guys so much. But they sent us a billion seeds and we don't have enough garden space to garden all of them. So we decided to share it with our subscribers too as well. And also they are giving us a discount. So if you guys want to get seeds, you can get any of their seed bundles. Um, they have three different bundles. I'll put the link down below and you can get a discount with Team Vincent as your promo code. But I decided to pick our first winner which I use the little phone app guys to pick a winner. But our first winner is going to get the California Wonder Peppers and the Round Zucchini. And our winner is G Mama Grows. Put that right here. So all you gotta do is go down below and just comment and email me that you know you won and email me your address and I will get those sent to you. And I just wanna say big thank you to everybody that has supported our channel and helped us with the growth of growing Team Benson. It means a lot, lot to me, guys. But we're gonna be doing this giveaway every 500 subscribers, and big thank you, even more so, to Survival Garden Seeds for making all of this happen. So we're gonna go back to Morning Tiffany, where we will be continuing the garden tour. But let's just take a minute to appreciate how full and beautiful this black cherry tomato is. Now, although we got super hot temperatures yesterday, look at how green and beautiful and how it's still flowering and not seeming to be bothered by the hot heat. That is because I am keeping it well watered and I pruned all of the dead and dying parts off of it. And then I also have that little watering bulb in there. That has been helping keeping this nice and hydrated so that it can continue to grow and produce fruits. That's the big thing. You want it to try and keep producing, then make sure you plant it in the right spot and you give it enough water. I swear guys, I, if I had come out here like an hour earlier, the city would have still been asleep. But now it's like everybody woke up. <laughs> the planes are flying, the cars are driving, and yeah, everybody's awake now. Now going out here guys, I do have my shade cloth on the top of my frames and my little windows of my frames too as well, just to kind of provide it with a little bit of an of some extra shade. Um, I am going to roll up the windows and then leave that for probably until about this afternoon when it really needs to be dropped back down. All right guys, so now it's all open up, let's walk through it. We have the Malabar spinach still looking a beautiful and great and doing its thing and then inside here we have the tomato plant which this one is the beefsteak tomato and i think it just needed a little bit of shade because i'm starting to get some new growth at the top of it so hopefully that one will continue to grow up now the swiss chard and the kale right below it is doing really good guys as you can see no white flies um, so the shade was helping a lot and then we have some onions in there and I think these celery though they're starting to get attacked by something so I think the heat is finally getting to them now the uh, banana peppers and the uh, bell pepper huge still getting huge and they're still deciding to put off more fruit so we have more of that coming and then look at that guys I don't know. I think that this thing is going to just continue to produce all summer long, it feels like. It feels like I'll just be drowning in banana peppers and bell peppers. But look at this, guys. The uh, one Armenian cucumber is surviving. Now, I do have to water it really, really deeply, and I gave it a watering bulb, too, as well. But it looks like it just might make it. Now, someone did tell me that they had some Armenian cucumbers at the um, AZ Worm Farm. So I did get one little guy here and plant in there with it. But I think that we might be fine. And look at this. See that sunflower? That thing is huge. It finally has the flower top at the top of it. So I think that's as tall as it's going to get. And that thing is going to be absolutely beautiful when it opens up. 
Now down below we have the lemongrass looking all nice and full and gorgeous. And then we have our two surviving okra. Our one of them died. So we have two surviving ones. I'm gonna start planting okra in the house um, coming up soon here so you guys will see that. We have some onions in the corner. We have the spearmint right up here. And then look at this little guy. We have that cucumber that popped up all in its lonesome. <laughs> And then we have some parsley here too as well. And then in the very corner, look at this red kakuri squash. These leaves guys are so huge and beautiful. I absolutely love them and it's starting to make its climb. And then underneath here, we have the onions too as well. Now I'm so excited at the fact that I planted onions pretty much everywhere in my garden. So I'm hoping that I get a lot of onions coming up this summer and I can preserve a lot because last year I went and I picked about, I would say 20 onions and I chopped them up and I froze them. And by not, by having them frozen and not having the onion go to waste, I actually needed right around 20 onions. So if I can grow my own 20 onions, that means I don't have to go to the farm and pick any. I can just have them back here in my small space garden. Now back there we have our other rosemary. That one's our third. Rosemary's doing way better now that it's in this spot getting more sunlight. And then we have our onions that, wow guys, this is what makes me so super excited. Just having all these big huge onions here. Um, I grew these ones from like the little bulbs. These are a mystery onion because if you guys remember in a video a while back, I got them from Home Depot and they just had them loose that they couldn't sell because they weren't like in the package anymore. So they just gave them to me. So these are free onions. Don't you like the sound of free onions? And then I have the uh, cucumber below. It's not doing great in this spot. I think it's getting way too much sun. So I'm probably gonna move that. Normally it sits over there and it does a lot better, but yeah, it's not insanely happy over here. So I probably will have to move it. But the shade cloth is keeping away a lot of the white flies. It still has a few, but not as many as it had before. Now look at this roselle, guys. Look at how beautiful it is. The roselle is growing up nice and tall and the hyssop is growing up below it. So I'm excited for there to be hyssop all over this bed with this huge roselle that'll probably get, if it did like last year, above the fence line and it will be beautiful and shading this area of the garden. So hopefully then the onions can get nice and big because they will have the shade of the roselle. So when I talk about things of like building a ecosystem in your garden and having things cover other things, creating some of that um, vertical gardening and a little bit of that like protection in your garden, this is what I'm talking about. Grow things that are going to protect some of the other things that need protecting and you'll have a beautiful garden that is nice and healthy that you're not having to spray a bunch of stuff on it. So speaking of nice and healthy, look at this midget cantaloupe that took the 103 degrees like a champ. This one didn't even get covered up. And guys, normally I have the midget cantaloupe growing somewhere underneath, um, like underneath, like somewhere like this. Normally I think it grows over here. That's where I grew it at last year. And it's doing way better now that it has full sun. So we already have, it looks like some little bitty babies coming on it. And yeah, this thing is filling in nicely. There are only two plants here. Um, midget can, cantaloupe can be a little um, viney, like just on its own, like not really filling in. So you wanna plant more than one. We have the African daisies and the calendula and that one random kale that I just have right there. We're getting close to the end of this garden tour because I have to go to work, but I want to show you guys my trees before I sign off. Now my mulberry did not really appreciate its 105 degree setting. So it does have a little bit of crisp on the leaves, but it is still doing well. I'll make sure I'll give that one some extra water. What's been helping me guys decide how much water to give the trees are these bulbs. Those are the best things I could have bought from the Dollar Tree. and. Some of them will suck water down and the other ones I know, okay, I need to water it deeper and then give it one of the bulbs too as well, like this mulberry. So then that way these leaves aren't getting so burned up. 
Now this area is a bit of a mess here. I was trying to add some compost to some things and then I still have the big shade cloth that I don't think I'm gonna use this year. I think that this year I planned, it, planned out what to plant a lot better. So we have some flowers. This time is doing so much better now that it's underneath the umbrella. This is the one I forgot to water, that's the lemon balm. And then these potatoes are doing a lot better now that the shade cloth was over them. These ones suffered less damage because they were further over here. Um, so yeah, these ones are in better shape than the Yukon Golds. And then we also have the sweet potato that is just loving its life. Like the sweet potato loves the sun. It loves where it's at. It's totally cool with everything. The blackberry guys is also loving its life. Look at how tall it has gotten. So I'm really excited for this to just really, really fill in nice and beautiful. And then these were, were I was saying the Yukon Golds. I don't know about these guys. <laughs> they are not doing too well. But a lot of them are putting off new little leaves. So we'll just kind of see if that actually produces a potato. So what I should have done was plant the Yukon Gold potatoes way earlier. But as you guys know, I did not get them in the ground early enough. So we've gotten some damage with the sun. Sweet potatoes, on the other hand, are doing a lot better. So next thing I'll do for next year is plant sweet potatoes more during this time and then use the um, Yukon gold potatoes and regular potatoes earlier in the spring slash winter. Then we have the lime tree guys. I'm getting so many little limes on this thing. I am so excited about this. This is going to be a great lime harvest this year and we are going to be able to preserve these which I'll be able to show you guys how I do that. And then the last little guy I have underneath here is the banana tree. It's doing well. It has its little water bulb, it has its shade cloth, and it's pretty happy with life. So guys, that is the garden in all of its 105 degree glory today. I am going to put its shade cloth back over it, let it be nice and covered up, give it a ton of water, and then I'm heading to work and I'm gonna let it sleep for the day. As you guys can see, I do have a lot of it still open. So there is a lot of plants I think that I planted smartly this year with planting plants that can handle the sun, getting them in nice and early, letting them getting established, and now providing them just with water as they protect some of the other ones below it. So make sure you guys are planning your garden, keep your garden journal, decide where to put things, where not to put things, where are gonna be the best place for their growth, and it's going to keep the plant healthy and grow yourselves organic beautiful gardens but until next time grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food i almost fell <laughs>